The Ursa Cine 12K LF is an incredibly powerful camera, which, thanks to its new stripped back body only version, can now be owned for a pretty incredible price, considering it competes in image quality with the best cameras on the market. As it's both a 12K camera and capable of some pretty insane high frame rates, the camera can achieve some real eye-wateringly high data rates. Luckily, Blackmagic RAW gives you a huge amount of control over compression, so the vast majority of users are never going to have to go near those large full-size options. Plus, the camera is designed to work with the fantastic media module, which is 8 terabytes of storage, which you can just slot right into the camera, effectively use as internal storage. This has enough cooling and is fast enough to handle anything that the camera can do with ease. But the body only version of the camera doesn't come with that media module in the box. You can of course buy it as an optional extra, which is something that is normally well worth doing. But in the box, it comes with this, the CF Express module, which has two regular CF Express card slots on it. So naturally, one of the options which we get asked the most from customers is how to choose the CF Express card for this camera. What can you actually record from the camera onto them? You know, where are the limits? And this of course is a huge topic as there are so many different variables. There's so many data rates in the camera, so many different cards on the market. But we wanted to make this video to hopefully help give a little bit of clarity where we can on this subject for customers. So the CF Express module itself doesn't impose any artificial frame rate limits on the camera. If you have fast enough cards, you're going to be able to do everything that the camera is capable of, which is fantastic. And fast enough cards are getting more and more affordable. These are the Angelbird new lineup of SE Mark II cards, which are some of the best value for money ones which we've seen, and they're really fast. Because these are from a trusted brand, which we actually recommend a huge amount here at Pro-V, and they are both affordable and fast, we're just going to concentrate on testing these three cards for this video, as I think these will get recommended a lot by our sales team for this camera. So Angelbird do publish the sustained write speeds on their website, which is really helpful. These are the ones which matter here most, of course. And these are fast cards. The 512 gigabyte is 1050 megabytes a second sustained. Now that's pretty normal for a CF Express card, but a much higher priced CF Express card than this. And then when you go up the storage capacity, the one terabyte is double that at 2100, and the two terabyte and four terabyte, they're both an incredible 3150 megabytes a second. Which if we look at the data rate calculator on Blackmagic's website, is pretty much everything that the camera can do apart from those really crazy high combinations. You know, I doubt people are actually gonna be using those anyway. When we put this actually into practice though, we were hugely surprised. We've taken the last few days to test this, really scratching our heads in confusion basically. There are good news and bad news. The good news is that affordable CIF Express cards like these, these are capable of so much more than we were expecting. But the bad news is that it's confusing. It's unpredictable and it's inconsistent. We've been getting some very strange results with the cards working fine for some formats which they theoretically shouldn't be able to do, but then also dropping frames on some which they should just have no problem with. I wish I had a bit more clarity and specific answers on what's happening here, but I don't. I don't really know what's going on. Perhaps it's an overheating thing or a cooling thing. I really don't know. But all we can really do right now is show you the results which we got from our couple of days of testing and try and discuss a little bit of what this might mean for actual customers of this camera. First, let's go through the settings which we chose for these tests. We put the camera into a constant bitrate mode, of course, so that we knew what the bitrate was going to be. And then we just let the camera run in each setting with the goal of either filling up the card or getting to 30 minutes of record time without dropping any frames, with whichever one came first. Let's look at each card in turn, the 512, the one terabyte, and then we'll group the two terabytes and four terabytes together as they are the same speed. To make these possible, we stuck to 17 by nine DCI aspect ratio, and then the highest three to one compression, even though I'd recommend most people don't go up to three to one, they drop it down for their work, that enables us to stress test these cards. 
and then we're going to do each resolution at 25p, 50p, 75p, and then whatever the max you can do in that resolution. So 100p in 12k or 180 in 8k and 4k. But as we go through these, remember that all of these tests are at three to one compression. It's higher than we recommend most people to use. Most people are going to scale that back. So the fast two terabyte and four terabyte cards, they do really well here. 4K is no problem at all at any frame rate. 8K does well, 25P and 50P are fine. And although 75P did drop a frame, it lasted for over 19 minutes of recording before dropping that frame. So for most situations, that's going to work absolutely fine. I don't know why it dropped a frame. We tested it multiple times as well. The data rate is meant to be 1.3 gigabytes a second, so much less than the card can handle. There's no way you're getting up to 8K 180 frames a second at three to one though. For that, you are gonna have to drop down the compression ratio with CF Express cards like this. In 12K, we managed 25 and 50 again without issue, and then 75, actually gets a tick here as well, even though we didn't get a tick in 8K, which has half the data rate. Very strange. 12K 100 frames a second is a data rate of four gigabytes a second, so way above what the card can handle. And it did drop frames, but it lasted for three minutes and 50 seconds, which, you know, that actually isn't that bad for 100 frames a second slow motion. If you turn that back into 25B, that's, that's 11 minutes of footage after all. So let's now look at the one terabyte card, and that is quoted to be much slower at 2,100 megabytes a second rather than 3,150. So it's still fast, just not as fast as the two terabytes. But this, this is the card that really blew us away here. It very nearly got the same results as the faster two terabyte card. 4K again, completely fine. 8K is again fine up to 50p, but now 75p gets a tick when it didn't on the faster two terabyte card. Again, what is going on? We filled up the one terabyte card in 12 minutes and 39 seconds, while the two terabyte dropped a frame after 19 minutes. So we did get longer record times on the two terabytes, but that is way better than we expected the one terabyte to do. In 12K, 25 and 50p were again fine, but we even managed 12K 75p which was a huge surprise. This has a data rate of three gigabytes a second, far more than the two gigabytes the card is meant to be able to do. And yet we filled up the card in nine minutes and 22 seconds. No issues, no drop frames. Then there was another surprise at 12K 100p, as although it did drop a frame, it lasted for three minutes, 40 seconds. That is only 10 seconds less than the faster two terabytes card did. Very, very confusing, but very impressive. Then we have the cheapest and slowest card here, the 512 gigabyte. So this has that quoted sustained write speed of 1050 megabytes a second. So it's a third of the speed of the two terabyte and four terabyte cards. Despite this, 4K at three to one still worked perfectly. Then both 8K and 12K worked perfectly up to 50p. Again, a big surprise, 12K 50p is two gigabytes a second. That's double what the card is meant to be able to do. I just, I don't know what's going on here. But we filled the card up in seven minutes with no drop frames. The max frame rates didn't work here at all, but we did manage to get a few minutes out of 75p in both 8K and 12K, which is pretty good. So what does this all mean? I mean, who knows? <laughs> it's been a bit of a recurring theme that we don't know what's going on in these tests. They've certainly surprised us, but they've mainly been positive surprises. Sure, there are a few modes which aren't working when the numbers say that they should, but mostly we're getting better results than we should be getting here. And again, all of these tests have been done at three to one compression. It's not an option that we normally recommend people use. Most people are gonna be far better off in real world work by dropping it down to eight to one or even further because the quality difference is not that big. And so we'll likely be fine with all but the highest frame rate options here. So yes, everything is going to be a bit more inconsistent with CF Express cards on the Ursa Cine. But because these cards are getting so fast now and so affordable, 
it's likely that this is going to be enough for most users. And remember, the media module has none of this. So there is an option that is still a really good price, has that huge capacity with eight terabytes and can handle any mode that the camera is capable of without breaking a sweat at all. So if you need peace of mind, go for the media module. But as an end user, it's great to have options. And that is what this CF Express module gives you. So I hope this video has helped. Even if we did get some strange and unexplainable results at times, if you've got any other questions that we can actually answer, let us know down in the comment section. And if you're looking for the Ursa Cine for your own work, then the team here at ProV would be happy to help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.